What's going on everybody? I'm Johnny Brook. Welcome back to another Crafted Workshop video. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to build this ebonized white oak mid-century modern nightstand. I love the way this came out. The drawer front, I think, really makes this piece. I actually used my new laser cutter to cut this geometric pattern on the front, and I just think it's gorgeous. This style is perfect. Kind of built it to the height of our bed, and it matches pretty much perfectly. So I built a pair of these for our master bedroom here, and I'm just excited to finally actually have a nightstand on my side of the bed. So uh, let's go ahead and get started with the build. A pair of nightstands for our master bedroom have been on my list for a long time now. Actually, I've been without a nightstand on my side of the bed for about four years, which is kind of ridiculous. How does the saying go, the cobbler's children have no shoes? Well, in my case, the woodworker's wife has a crappy Ikea nightstand. Anyway, I had some leftover white oak from the arts and crafts dining chairs I built a little while back, and it was almost exactly the amount I needed for a pair of nightstands. Because most of the stock I purchased for that project was 8 quarter, meaning it was about 2 inches thick, it meant that I had a lot of dimensioning and resawing to do since I wanted to use 3 quarter inch stock for this project. And that's what you've seen me doing up until this point. If you wanted to build this project yourself, I'd recommend just using a few hardwood 1x8s, you'd save yourself a lot of work. Once I had my pieces down to roughly three quarters of an inch thick, I ripped them to rough width at the table saw, making sure to leave a little extra width for final trimming later on. With my pieces at their rough size, I glued them up into panels, making sure they stayed nice and flat during the glue up. After the glue dried, I flattened the panels at the planer, evening up the two halves of the panels, and since the panels are so narrow, you should probably be able to get away with this even on a 13 inch planer. Once the panels were planed flat, I passed them through the drum sander to remove any tool marks or snipe and to get the panels sanded. These types of projects are really where the drum sander shines as hand sanding all these panels would have taken a long time. And while I'm sanding, let's talk about one of the sponsors of this week's video, Acme Tools. My drum sander, the Supermax 1938, was provided by my friends at Acme Tools and I highly encourage you check them out if you're thinking of purchasing any power tools or other items for your shop. Acme Tools has served the contractor, woodworker, and do-it-yourselfer since 1948 with a wide selection of tools and equipment from all the major manufacturers, and to learn more, check out the link in the video description below. After sanding, I squared up one end of each of the panels of the miter saw, and this square end will ride against the table saw fence when cutting the bevels in the next step. Next, I set my table saw blade to 45 degrees and cut a beveled edge on each of the panels, riding the square edge up against the fence. At this point, I wanted to take as little off of the panels as possible, as I wanted to have plenty of room for final trimming later. With a 45 degree bevel cut on one end of each panel, I set my fence to 19 inches to trim my top and bottom panels to final length. And I made sure to cut all four top and bottom panels for my pair of nightstands while the fence was set, to make sure the measurement was exactly the same on each panel. After trimming the top and bottom panels the length, I repeated the same process for the sides, setting the fence to 13 and a quarter inches. The last cut to make on the panels was a 45 degree bevel on the front edge of all the panels, and this is optional, but I think the bevel on the front edge is actually one of the biggest design elements of these nightstands. It gives it a really cool look. To help with assembly, I decided to add some biscuits in the corners of the nightstand carcass, and biscuits are extremely helpful when it comes to aligning the corners of a beveled cabinet like this, and you can pick up a biscuit joiner for as cheap as 60 bucks new, and even cheaper used. They also add a good bit of strength to the mitered corners. After cutting the biscuit slots, I moved on to assembling the carcass, which went pretty smoothly. I really like to use these strap clamps when assembling mitered carcasses, as they help to hold things in place while I add clamps. And one of the panels had bowed a little bit overnight, and these straps helped to persuade the panels to lie flat during the glue up. Once the glue dried, I removed the clamps, sanded off any glue squeeze out, and then moved over to the router table to cut the rabbit into the back of the cabinet to accept the back panel. I used a half inch rabbiting bit for this and probably should have made this cut in two passes. Oak is extremely stringy and loves to tear out in huge chunks, but luckily I didn't have any major issues. Next, I cut the back panels to size from some scraps of quarter inch plywood I had on hand, and then rounded the corners with my random orbit sander so that they'd fit into the rabbit. I could have used a chisel to square up the corners on the cabinet, but I find that sanding is usually actually a little faster. To attach the back panel to the nightstand, I used a little glue and a few brad nails. And pro tip, it helps to have your air compressor plugged in when you're using your brad nailer. 
Once the back panel dried, I chamfered the sides and back edges using my router. And since the front edges are already beveled, the chamfer bits bearings didn't have anything to ride up against, so I pulled out my trusty black plane to chamfer those edges. Before chamfering, the front edges were extremely fragile, so I definitely recommend doing this. Also, chamfering edges with a block plane is definitely one of woodworking's greatest pleasures. With the cabinets done, it was time to move on to the drawers. For the drawer fronts, I wanted to give them an interesting aesthetic, so after cutting the drawer fronts to size, I drew a little curve that would serve as the drawer pull. I cut out the curve on the bandsaw, although a jigsaw would work fine if you don't have a bandsaw, and then refined the curve using my oscillating belt sander. Next, I traced the curve onto the second drawer front, cut away the excess at the bandsaw, making sure to stay proud of my line, and then moved over to the router table. I attached the drawer front with the refined curve to the other drawer front with some double-sided tape, and then used a flush trim bit to cut the second drawer front to match. Also, ignore the laser cut pattern here. I forgot to cut this pull cutout prior to laser engraving the first drawer front, and we'll get to that a little later. Next, I rounded over the top edges of the drawer front, since this is where your hands will come into contact with it, and then I moved over to the laser cutter. This is the Full Spectrum Muse, their new hobby laser, and it's got a camera inside that allows you to place your artwork on the piece you're laser engraving with pretty good accuracy. I found this geometric pattern on Google Images and just dragged and dropped it into Retina Engrave, Full Spectrum software. After getting my settings dialed in, I sent the job to the laser and it got to engraving. This engraving process took about 30 minutes and I made sure that the artwork bled over the edges so there'd be a cool edge-to-edge -edge design. Since the laser only cuts in a small focus area, the laser won't damage the bed of the laser cutter even though it's cutting over the edges. While the laser cutter worked, I got to work on the drawers. The drawer sides are made of half inch plywood and the bottoms are made of quarter inch plywood, and I cut the sides, fronts, and backs to size at the table saw. I decided to use hardwood drawer slides on this build since I couldn't find 11 inch drawer slides locally and these drawers won't exactly see heavy use. To do this, first I cut a 3 quarter inch wide groove into the drawer sides to accept the drawer slides using a dado stack. The depth of the cut will depend on your drawer slides, but I went with a quarter inch deep groove. Next I cut the drawer bottoms to size on the table saw and miter saw. To assemble the drawer, I kept it really simple and just used 1 inch brad nails and glue. And this is kind of an experiment, just to see how these drawers hold up with no other extra fasteners, and I have a feeling they'll be just fine. One little trick to hide the drawer bottoms from view is to chamfer the edges so that the chamfer just meets the bottom of the drawer sides, and it's a really quick process and makes the drawers look a ton cleaner. Something I should have done before assembly was to cut a portion of the drawer front so that the interior drawer box will be hidden once the drawer front is attached. I just traced the shape of the drawer front onto the drawer box, cut it out with a jigsaw, and sanded it smooth. The last pieces for the nightstands were the hardwood drawer slides, which I cut from a scrap piece of hard maple I already had on hand. The slides ended up at 3 quarters of an inch thick by half an inch wide. Now you might be asking yourself, what about the legs? And that's a good question. I would actually originally intended to turn some tapered legs on the lathe using some more leftover oak I had. And I spent a few hours last week getting my lathe all set up, cutting some leg blanks, and then getting two out of the eight legs turned. After finishing the second leg, I hopped on Amazon really quick just to see how much a similar leg would cost. $2.50. Yes, $2.50. I decided to scrap the idea of turning them myself and just bought eight legs. Anyway, back to the project. I decided to ebonize the oak and after some research found that some people were using India ink for this. I'll have a link in the video description to the exact ink I used and I love the way it came out. I just wiped on a heavy coat using a shop towel and let it dry overnight. For the finish, I decided to spray on a few coats of water-based polyurethane instead of wiping it on because I was afraid the ink might bleed. And to do this, I used my Q3 Platinum HVLP system by Fuji Spray, one of the sponsors of this week's video. If you've watched many of my videos, you know that I love spraying on finishes, and the Q3 is an outstanding HVLP system for this. The sheer amount of adjustability in the airflow, fan shape, and amount of material that's passing through the gun allows you to really dial in your finishing, and making adjustments when finishing different parts of the project is super simple. To learn more about Fuji Spray and their line of HVLP systems, check out the link in the video description below. After the finish dried, it was time to assemble the nightstands. First, I installed the legs. This was pretty simple. I just needed to add these brackets I picked up off of Amazon, and I'll have a link in the video description to the legs as well as the brackets I used. 
I marked a center line using a speed square and measured roughly four inches in, then centered the bracket and added the included screws. With the legs installed, I moved on to installing the drawer slides onto the sides of the cabinets using a few one inch screws. And I made sure to pre-drill and countersink the holes so that the heads of the screws were below the surface of the slides. To make the drawer slide a little easier, I added a little bit of paste wax to the drawer slides and I'll just reapply this wax periodically to keep the drawers riding smoothly. Next I added the drawer fronts to the drawer boxes using the playing card trick to space the drawer front evenly. The little handle cutout allowed me to get a clamp onto the drawer front and then I just added a few screws from the inside of the drawer to attach the drawer front. With the drawers installed, the nightstands were done. All right, hopefully you guys enjoyed this one. This was a pretty simple build. Uh, I did have a little bit of trouble getting those drawer slides installed, but I finally figured out a good method. Uh, this beveled front edge really made it tricky because I didn't have anything to reference off of to kind of get those drawer slides square. So that was a bit of a trick, but I'm really happy with the way it came out. The wooden drawer slides actually work really well and they saved me, you know, whatever, 15 bucks per drawer slide. So that's a nice cheap option. And the reason I went with the wooden ones is that I couldn't find any drawer slides short enough to fit this drawer. Uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed this one. If you did, go ahead and get subscribed. I put out new project videos like this pretty much every week. I will also have plans available for this if you guys want to build this for yourself. And I'll have a list of all the tools and materials I used in the video description below. All right, thanks again for watching guys. And until next time, Happy building.